Ever wondered why financial discipline seems like a far-fetched dream? In an age where consumerism is at an all-time high, maintaining financial discipline can feel like trying to climb Mount Everest in flip-flops. We're constantly bombarded with the latest gadgets, the trendiest clothes, the flashiest cars. It's easy to get caught up in the whirlwind of spending. And let's not even get started on impulse purchases. Who hasn't been guilty of that? But here's the deal. Financial discipline is not just about denying yourself the pleasures of life. It's about making informed decisions that ensure your money works for you, not against you. It's about creating a safety net for those rainy days, planning for your future, and achieving your financial goals. The power to transform your financial future is in your hands. But what if there was a way to make this dream a reality? Step 1. Set Realistic Financial Goals It's the cornerstone of financial discipline, the blueprint to your fiscal success. We're not talking about wishing upon a star for a million dollars. No, we're talking about setting specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound goals, or as we like to call them, SMART goals. Think about it like this, you wouldn't set out on a road trip without a destination in mind, right? The same applies to your finances. Your financial goals are your destination, the place where you want your money to take you. Whether it's saving for a down payment on a house, paying off student loans, or building a retirement nest egg, your goals should be as unique as you are. But remember, they've got to be realistic. You can't expect to save a million dollars in a year if your salary is 50,000. Be honest with yourself about what you can achieve and set your goals accordingly. Remember, a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step and that's setting your financial goals. Moving on to step two, creating a budget. Now don't let the word budget scare you off. It's not as daunting as it sounds. Think of it as your personalized financial blueprint. It's a tool that helps you understand where your money is going and how you can control it to achieve your financial goals. There are several methods you can use. The envelope system where you allocate cash for different categories or the zero-based budgeting where you assign each dollar a job. The choice is yours and there's no one-size-fits-all. The key is to find a method that works best for your lifestyle and stick to it. Remember, a budget is not about depriving yourself of what you want, but about understanding and controlling your spending habits. It's about making sure your money is working for you and not the other way around. A budget is not a restriction, but a financial freedom roadmap. Step three involves building an emergency fund. Now, if you're asking, what's an emergency fund? Don't sweat it, we're about to break it down. Picture this, you're cruising down the highway of life when suddenly, flat tire. But this isn't your regular flat tire, oh no. This is an unforeseen medical bill or a sudden job loss or a major home repair. That's where your emergency fund comes in. It's like your financial first aid kit, ready to patch up any unexpected money wounds. An emergency fund provides financial security, giving you the confidence to walk through life knowing you're covered if things go south. It reduces stress too. Imagine not having to worry about every little bump in the road. That's the power of an emergency fund. So how do you build one? Start small, save consistently, and before you know it, you'll have a cushion to fall back on. Think of your emergency fund as a financial safety net. Step four, reduce your debt. Now, doesn't that sound like a breath of fresh air? But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Reducing debt is a significant part of financial discipline, and it's not always a walk in the park. Think of debt as this relentless monster, always lurking, always ready to pounce. The more we feed it, the bigger and scarier it becomes. But here's the kicker. We have the power to tame this beast. Now, there are several strategies to reduce debt. You could use the avalanche method where you focus on paying off the debt with the highest interest rate first. Or you might prefer the snowball method where you begin with the smallest debt and work your way up. Either way, the goal is to stop feeding the monster and start shrinking it. But let's be clear, reducing debt is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It requires dedication, discipline, and a whole lot of patience. It's about making sacrifices today for a better tomorrow. It's about saying no to that shiny new gadget or that tempting vacation package and yes to financial freedom. And remember, the impact of debt goes beyond the confines of your wallet. It affects your mental health, your relationships, your overall quality of life. A life free from the shackles of debt is a life lived on your own terms. Debt reduction is not just about money, it's about regaining control of your life. Finally, step five, invest for the future. 
Investing is an essential part of financial discipline. It's like planting a seed today, nurturing it, and then reaping a bountiful harvest in the future. There are a multitude of investment options out there. You could invest in the stock market, real estate, mutual funds, or even start your own business. The trick is to find something that aligns with your financial goals and risk tolerance. Remember, it's not about chasing the hottest trends but about making informed and strategic decisions. One of the key elements of investing is understanding the power of compound interest. It's not just about the amount you invest, but also about the time you allow your investment to grow. Compound interest is like a snowball rolling down a hill. It starts small, but as it rolls down, it gathers more snow and grows bigger. Your investments work the same way. The longer you leave your money invested, the more it has the potential to grow. When it comes to investing, patience is indeed a virtue. It's not a sprint to the finish line, but more of a marathon. It's about consistent financial discipline, making regular contributions to your investments, and letting the magic of compound interest do its work. Investing is not about getting rich quick. It's about securing your financial future. Make your money work for you and pave the way to financial freedom. So, we've covered the five steps to increase financial discipline. Let's do a quick recap. First, setting realistic financial goals is crucial. It's like setting your GPS before a long journey. Your financial goals are your destination, and they guide your every decision. Second, creating a budget is your roadmap. It outlines your income and expenses, helping you to avoid unnecessary detours and stay on track. The third step is building an emergency fund. This is your safety net, ready to catch you when life throws you a curveball. Fourth, reducing debt. Think of this as shedding excess weight, the lighter your debt load, the quicker and easier your journey to financial freedom. Finally, investing for the future. This is like planting seeds today for a bountiful harvest tomorrow. It's your ticket to a comfortable and secure retirement. Remember, financial discipline is a marathon, not a sprint. Start today and you'll be amazed at how far you've come tomorrow.